every discovery. Right now, we're becoming a multi-planetary species. With every hardship, I'm worried. I, I don't know about this. We had these people taking immense risks. We were taking a step forward for humankind. Taking a trip to Mars is no longer a distant possibility, it's a reality. On TV, that is, with the new National Geographic TV series, Mars. The series documents the quest to reach the red planet, and the WSJ's John Jurgensen is here to discuss how it could change the world of television. Welcome to you, John Jurgensen. This hey there. How are you doing? Great. Great. Okay, so this combines the documentary feel with the cinematic feel, right? Yeah, I think that's going to be the thing that probably jars viewers the fir at first when they watch this, if they watch Mars, uh, which starts on Monday. Uh, it's kind of a mix of sci-fi drama and uh, science documentary. So you start with a fictional mission to Mars in 2033, and then you shift back to what's happening in the real world um, in 2016. So it's a bit of a hybrid mix that's uh, a big experiment for them. Yeah, this is a new approach overall in television, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you're going to see a lot more of these um, these kind of uh, risky styles that are that are popping up as people try and grab attention for for documentaries, which you know don't always pop out as something that's sexy on TV with for big ratings. You know, they're trying to mix things up uh, and grab attention for something that used to be a little bit more of a uh, tradition bound format. And the budget for this show is massive. How big of a risk is National Geographic taking on this? Well, the whole sh the whole show it's a six part miniseries. Uh, it costs twenty million dollars or more, probably, uh, from what I've been told. Um, the whole show is really being built to relaunch National Geographic, both the channel and the whole brand. Uh, so they were trying to finish this documentary in time for this relaunch of the whole National Geographic brand. So a lot is definitely riding on this, not just for ratings, but also for the visibility of, of the channel and sort of the way it fits into the landscape. Uh, and they're hoping to really differentiate themselves with something like this, which is produced by Ron Howard and Brian Grazer has got a pretty big pedigree. Yeah, some huge names involved. And I noticed in your story that Elon Musk uh, is involved. He's always been a big dreamer, but a lot of his dreams become reality. Explain his involvement in this project. Yeah, the production company that originated the project, uh, Radical Media, uh, first approached him, you know, just with the idea of doing a documentary on his work with SpaceX um, and, and their rockets and sort of uh, reusable rockets. But uh, as, as time went on, they decided to do something a little bit more ambitious, uh, got uh, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer aboard and then National Geographic aboard for this big swing. Uh, so their idea was to kind of not just look at what's happening in the present, but what it could mean. And the only way you can really do that is to make it up, you know, make up, make a yeah. fictional drama about what might happen when they get to when they get to Mars uh, with all the sort of cliffhangers and uh, sort of relationships that are involved in more of a uh, more of a movie format. Last year, we saw other networks release documentaries like Netflix's Making a Murderer, which got huge response. Take a listen. We were getting ready to bring a lawsuit. $36 million. Manitowoc County itself and the sheriff and the DA would be on the hook for those damages. They're not handing that kind of money over to Steve Avery. I did tell him, be careful. They are not even close to being finished with you. Right on trend with everything else that's going on, right, John? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Making a Murderer really sort of made waves uh, last year in a way that um, kind of resembled what would happen if people were binge watching, you know, <laughs> a cliffhanger drama. Uh, they were tuning in every day and, and watching it and talking about it with their friends. And that was a, world, something, a story from the world of nonfiction and, of course, really boosted the true crime format, which is, you know, a tried and true one of TV. Uh, but it gave, it gave filmmakers and producers uh, a real incentive to uh, try and shake things up and do things in a different style and really kind of make it resemble uh, drama in the way that it pulled viewers along. And so you have folks like Netflix and Amazon and even some of these cable channels going to Sundance Film Festival, for example, to to pick up documentaries that they think are going to break out of, of the pack. And this comes at a time when it's really harder to launch these reality TV shows. And we've had a lot of these sort of ice road truckers and uh, Wicked Tuna and, and, and shows about like rugged folks out in the in the world. Um, and it's harder it's harder to break through with those kind of things now. So a lot of folks are, you know, just being a little bit more ambitious and actually actually spending a lot more money on these things too. John, how do you expect Mars to impact other documentary makers? 
Uh, I think it really is going to depend on how it's received. I mean, right now, the, the reviews that are coming in are a bit mixed. I think a lot of people are uh, a little bit thrown by this this hybrid format of doc and science fiction drama. Um, so that that is going to be one test of it for sure, you know, what the ratings are like and what the response is like. Uh, but I can tell you for sure that a lot of people who make documentaries for a living are very excited about the prospect of channels like National Geographic and others and, and, and the, you know, Amazon, Netflix, et cetera, of the world investing more in this space. You know, that means more money, bigger budgets for, for things that uh, were a little bit harder to sell even a few years ago. Okay, a lot riding on this for National Geographic. Thanks a lot, John Jurgensen. We'll be sure to watch. My pleasure.